Hey, welcome back. This is Michael Nuzes doing Game Theory Lesson 2, The Prisoner's Dilemma. And I apologize, I just woke up. I haven't showered or even really woken up yet, but I promise I'm ready to teach this Game Theory lesson. I just woke up so inspired, we gotta do it. So here's the deal. You are Sergeant officer in charge of the prison investigations and whatnot and we have two suspects that were pretty positive committed a murder but we don't have enough hard evidence to put them away so we need you to come up with a way of kind of getting them to admit that they did it if we can get them to admit it it'll just hold up in court so much stronger than uh, what we've got right now so wouldn't that be great now Without game theory, we, we've got two prisoners in different rooms, which it's pretty key they're in different rooms, as we'll see why. It prevents them from cooperating, which allows them to be more strategic against us. So we've disabled that. And now without game theory, you might just think about trying kind of what we see on TV. Maybe we go into one room and try to be really intimidating and just say, like, hey, buddy, we know you did it. Just you're blatantly it and we're gonna put you in the way for life or something like that maybe it doesn't work so we try to go in the other room and then maybe we try to be all diplomatic and sweet and then oh well you know you can admit it and uh, that doesn't work either so with game theory uh, maybe you're not great at intimidating and stuff but you're smart and you know how to set up a system that will kind of help our suspects want to admit that they did it. Imagine that. So uh, let's let's take a look at how we set this up and, and get our suspects to actually admit to their crime here. So this might look a bit complicated at first. Don't be intimidated. Promise it's not that bad. Oh, and just a reminder, this is uh, Game Theory Lesson 2, The Prisoner's Dilemma. Pretty key uh, game theory to understand. So we have two suspects. We got Bob and we got Jane. And both of our suspects have two possible strategies they can use against us. They can uh, rat out the other person or they can stay quiet. So Bob can choose this column or this, uh, or this row or this row. Jane can rat out here or stay quiet there. Now the numbers you're looking at represent the number of years that they'll stay in prison depending on the outcome. So obviously a lower number is better. Uh, you'd rather stay in prison one year than, than five and stuff like that. Oh, and the, the diagonal separation is indicating uh, who's getting what outcome. So this lower left separation is for Bob over on the left here and the upper right corner is for Jane. So let's look at what happens if they both rat each other out. So they rat out Jane rats out Bob, Bob rats out Jane. They're both getting five years. And uh, you might have noticed, well, why would they rat each other out? If they both just stay quiet, they both get two years, and that's way better. So they surely just cooperate, get the two years, get off easier, and uh, there you go, right? Uh, what we'll see from the game theory is that we're actually going to kind of trick them into ratting each other out. So they'll get this 5-5 five, five option, even though it's worse than uh, if they just got the 2-2 two, two over there. So how do we do that? The reason is we've set up the, the kind of reward structure or the punishment structure so that they are really better off ratting out the other person no matter what. So let me just take a moment to get my finger set up here and okay now we're looking at just Jane so we're looking at just the top right corners Jane has the rat out option on the left or the stay quiet on the right and we see that no matter what Bob does so whether Bob puts us in the upper row or the lower row doesn't matter what Bob does Jane is always better off on the left we see that 5 is lower than 8 1 is lower than 2 so Jane always finds that left column attractive, always wanting that less time in prison. 
Now if we switch it over to Bob, I won't spend much time uh, explaining this since we probably it's, it's just a mirror image of the other. Bob finds that regardless of the column that Jane puts us in, whether she puts us in the left or the right, Bob is always happier with the top row. He'd rather be five, five uh, years in prison than eight, and he'd rather be one than two. So Bob always likes ratting out. In game theory, anytime a player has an option that beats another option of theirs, no matter what the other person does, we call this a dominant strategy. So in the prisoner's dilemma, ratting out the other person uh, has intentionally been set up for them as the dominant strategy. So they're, they're both going to say, wow, ratting out is the better option here. And we're going to see them end up in this column. Now, what's interesting, we can put ourselves in their shoes and, and let's do it and think, well, wait a second, this sucks. We know that they want to trick us to go here. We might even be smart enough to, to understand the whole system and say, hell no, we're not going in for five years. Let's, let's like trick these suckers, get in there for two years. But the risk associated with staying quiet is you got to think, well, we both want to stay quiet and get the two years, but if I do rat them out, so Jane is thinking here, we could go here, but if I move us over to this column, I get one year less. And yeah, Bob gets eight, and that's kind of rough for Bob, but but hey, this is a, a kind of a better deal. And also, if, if I take the risk at staying here for the two, two, uh, or two years, two years, what if, ba what if Bob rats me out? So if Bob forces us to come up into this column, He's moving me from two years. Now all of a sudden I'm in prison for eight years. Whoa. Kind of a risk. So Jane might be willing to take the 2-2. Two -two. Bob might be willing to take the 2-2. Two -two. But both of them can't help but worry. Well, the other person, uh, they, they could put me in there for eight years. Uh, Bob is worried about Jane ratting out going to eight years. Jane's worried. So they're both worried about the eight years. And they're both worried about the other person's temptation to only go for one year. So they both understand that no matter what, the other person is better off ratting them out. And it's just kind of the way that they both just rat out, both get 5-5. Uh, five, five. It's kind of how we see the prisoner's dilemma uh, kind of forces them. to. It's in their best interest to rat out here. Always the, the top result. So, oh i got to introduce a game theory terminology. When you have a outcome that you achieve when both players play their dominant strategy, meaning the strategy that beats out the other in both cases, this is called the Nash Equilibrium. So this is, say, the solution to this game theory problem. Sounds like a sophisticated, complicated term. It's not complicated. It just means this is the column you identify as the one that we'll end up in because it is uh, the one where they both play their dominant strategy. And it's called the Nash Equilibrium after John Nash, the uh, kind of creator of game theory. So they, he stuck his name there, John Nash, Nash Equilibrium, right there. It's the optimal strategy for both players, which funnily enough, uh, funnily is a word in this case, is uh, worse than if they both cooperated. So. That's the prisoner's dilemma, and so in, in the future, if, if you're my wife, we know about the prisoner's dilemma, let's just stay quiet, right? I mean, we both know what they're trying to do, just stay quiet, it's the thing to do. But, wait a second, if you rat me out, I'll be in there for eight years rather than two and five, the one uh, is not, huh. So if you enjoyed this, uh, Michael News This, you can find more things like this at my blog. It's 2core.com, the number 2, C-O-R-E.com slash blog. And I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. See ya.